Hi and welcome to this PowerShell tutorial video. In this tutorial video, we'll be covering a, um, a question that we've got in the comments from Carrie Anguano. I'm sorry if I mispronounced that, uh, but she had asked for how to replace a header on all the files in a folder and specifically CSV files that have uh, headers. Uh, so what I have here, I have a uh, PS1 script that's just blank. And then I have a whole bunch of CSV files here. All of them for this test uh, do have the same columns, uh, column names. Uh, so they're all just call one through four, uh, just for the simplicity of creating these files. Um, but it really doesn't matter how many columns you have. Uh, we will be able to use this solution uh, for all those uh, different scenarios. So what we're first going to want to do in our script here, um, because she did mention uh, that we would want to grab all the files in the folder. So what I would do is I would create a variable here called CSV files uh, location. And we're going to set that to our file path uh, for the files here. So we're in users and then it's in my desktop and then in CSV header. So then we're going to go ahead and we are just going to grab these CSV files. Now, there might be other files in the folder. I am not 100% sure on that. And that wasn't specified in the question. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and assume that there are other types of files because um, that's really going to be the worst case scenario. Uh, and in my case, there is a PS1 file. Uh, so we're going to want to exclude the script. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a get child item and we're going to specify the path as csv files location and we are going to make a filter and the filter we are going to set that to double quotes and then we're going to do a star dot csv so this is going to grab only the csv files so if we go ahead and we run that here we are going to go ahead and we are going to see that we have all of our csv files so this is perfect. So once we have all of our CSV files, now the only part that we have left is really to replace that header. Now there are two ways to do this. Uh, so I'm going to show um, one of the ways, which is the import CSV and select object with some expressions first. And then I'll cover the second uh, variation that I have, uh, which is simply using the get content um, and then just replacing the content that's inside the file. I believe that the second method is probably going to be better. It's a little bit easier to use as well because uh, it doesn't rely on you knowing the existing column names. Uh, but we already know the existing column names. So we know that they're call one, call two, call three, call four. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to do that one first. So we're going to do a for each and we're going to do for each file in CSV files. And let's just go ahead and let's run that so we could get our dot notation working. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a data equals import CSV path. And we're gonna do a file dot full name. And our delimiter is going to be a comma. And let's just go ahead and let's look at what this gives us. So this will just import all the data. Um, and it looks as if it's just one file because uh, the PowerShell just kind of algamates it because it's always all the same column names. Uh, but that is OK. So what we want to do here is we want to select those specific column uh, and change the name of them. So an example of this would be, let's say if I only want column one, but I wanted to show name as the label, what you would do is you would do a, a you would pipe that to a select and then an at sign and then uh, opening in curly brace. And then we're going to do a label. We're going to do equals and we're going to do name in double quotes. Then we're going to do a semicolon. And then we're going to type in expression and then we're going to do an equal sign 
and again another pair of curly brackets and here we're going to do a dollar sign underscore dot call one so the dollar sign underscore is the passed in value from the pipe dot call one is for the call one column so if we go ahead and we just do this here there we see the column is now named now we can do this for each column. This gets kind of messy if you're doing all of these in that select statement. What I would actually do here is I would do, I'm gonna just name these column one, and then I'm going to set that equal to our expression here. And then we're gonna make a variable called column two. And we are just going to copy this expression over once again. And we're going to set this to day. And this is going to be call two. Let's just go ahead. Let's actually just copy that whole column. And we're just going to do column three. And column four. Column three is going to be month. And then column four is going to be, we're going to be changing it to year. We're just going to want to make sure that we also update our expressions here to reflect. And then in our select statement, all we need to do is select column one, uh, column two, column three, and then just reference those variables. And then what we're going to see is if we run all of this now, we now get name, day, month, year. That's perfect. And then all we need to do at that point is do a data. And instead of just showing the data, all we're going to be doing is piping that to export dash CSV. And then the path is going to be file dot full name. The delimiter, we are going to set that to our comma. And we're going to make sure that we're doing a no type information. So as you can see here, we still have call one, call two, call three, call four. And if we go ahead and we run this now, we now have name, day, month, year, name, day, month, year. So perfect. So this does work. Uh, so again, this would be using the import uh, CSV and then just doing a select with the expressions. Now I did mention that there was one other way to do this, uh, which is the get content uh, commandlet, and then just replacing the first row. Um, and this one I find is a little bit better because you don't really need to know the column names. Um, so, or if you have a bunch of files where maybe their column names are all different, uh, which would be weird that you would want to make them all the same, but that could be a possibility. Um, in which case the get content method would be really probably the only method unless you really wanted to start getting into uh, some different if statements and making a whole bunch of different expressions. Uh, but in this case, we would do another for each. Uh, so it would really be, it starts off the same. So for each file in CSV files. And then what we're going to do is we're going to use our uh, data variable once again. And we're going to make that equal to get content. And we're going to do the path, which is going to be uh, the file dot full name. And then what we're going to do is we're going to do a data. And let's just see what this gives us. So this will just should just output us the columns and then the data within those columns. Uh, but in just a string format. So then what we're going to do is we're going to select the first row. Now indexes, since this gets stored in an array, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be specifying our index of the array. And the first element in an array in PowerShell is at index zero. Uh, like pretty much 99% of programming languages, there are a few that start at one, um, but those are out of really the norm. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's only MATLAB, um, but let's go ahead and let's run this code. 
So here we have, we get all of our headers back, which is perfect. So what we're going to do is we're going to do data zero. So the data index zero is now going to be equal. And we're going to put uh, two quotes here. And let's actually just set it to what we had it before. So let's do call one, call two, call three, call four. And then all we're going to do is data. As you probably guessed it, we're just going to be doing a out file. And this one is a file path for the parameter. And we're going to be giving it file dot full name. Let's go ahead and let's run that here. Now, if we go back, we now have all of our headers just with call one, two, three, and four. So that would be how you modify all the headers in all the files in a specific folder. Of course, you could just do this for one file. Um, it would pretty much be the exact same. Instead of a for each loop, um, you would just specify the exact file that you'd want to change the header for. So this script is definitely usable in a lot of different situations. So I hope that answered the question, Carrie. Um, if you have any other questions to clarify something, just let me know down in the comments below and I will do my best to answer you. And if any of you guys have questions that you guys would like to ask, feel free to post them in the comments. If I find that they will be useful for a lot of people, I will make a video just like this one. Uh, so definitely feel free to leave those down below. Make sure to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and hit that notification bell to be notified when the next video comes out. And I will see you guys on the next video.